Welcome to the final days. Today is August 19th, 2019. Today we will be viewing some exciting footage of different celestial objects near Earth, never mentioned on mainstream news. I will be showing visual time and size comparisons, showing how much closer these objects have gotten in only a few weeks. These celestial objects are causing tectonic plate disturbances, increased volcanic activity, strange weather, and many other problems described in the Bible's accounts of the last days. The purpose of this channel is to show the viewers that we are living in the very last days according to the Holy Bible, and to explain why this is actually good news and cause for celebration, explained later in this video. All of the photos you are about to see were obtained within the past few days from the Federal Aviation Weather Cameras in Alaska and Canada. No editing was done except where clearly stated. The image you are viewing now is a modified one-year projection of an approaching celestial orb. Later in this video we will see this object as it is today and observe its rotation as it crosses the sky. Viewers have my full permission to re-display any parts of any of my photos without worrying about copyrights. Let's spread the truth. Our first video was captured by the Northwest Facing Camera in Toke, Alaska. Some contrast has been applied to some of these images to make this object easier to see. Notice how milky the sky looks. The Alaskan and Canadian skies are very heavily saturated with atmospheric chemicals in order to hide this planetary system that has now intermingled with ours. Anyone can search the internet for a chemtrail analysis to find that these chemicals are full of nearly microscopic sized particles of metal, bacteria, virus and smart fibers that replicate once inside a host body, causing new diseases that never existed before, such as Morgellons disease and others. These toxins are also responsible for many land and water mass animal die-offs. These mass die-offs are clearly predicted in the Bible's book of Revelation. Here is that red, fast-rotating celestial orb we see every day from Alaska. We know this can't be a lens flare of the sun because in the photos where the contrast has been added, the fast rotation of this orb is very obvious. Our sun only rotates once every 27 Earth days. Notice how thick the sky is with atmospheric chemicals in order to hide these celestial objects. In the Bible's book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, Jesus clearly tells us that we will see signs in the sky when the end is near. As Christians, we are commanded to watch for these signs and wonders, signaling the end of the age so that we are not ignorant of the very late hour in which we are living, and so that we can be spiritually prepared for what lies ahead and help others to become spiritually prepared also. In Soldotna, Alaska, we see a small moon. In April, we saw this moon orbiting a much larger celestial body, which we will review in just a moment. The small white dot between the moon and us is the craft we've seen in thousands of these images, which tows equipment that prevents NASA's circular glare from illuminating the celestial objects, causing them to be more visible to the public. A good example of this cloaking craft was back in February from the south-facing camera in Edna Bay. This craft follows the celestial object with cloaking equipment we will see in a moment. If we draw a straight line from the center of the manufactured light to the pink reflection of the craft in the lower right corner, the celestial object, being hidden, always falls upon that line, without exception. The pink reflection of this craft swings across the bottom of the screen as the craft stays between the celestial orb and us. It looks as though NASA's craft is very close to the celestial object. 
However, the celestial orb could be millions of miles away, and the craft could be hundreds of miles away or even closer. Here is the equipment that uh, the craft is towing to help hide these celestial objects. The black outline helps to define this object for any screens that may not have enough contrast to see it. Watch our April 26 video to see more on this cloaking equipment. Now back to the moon on the Soldotna camera. Some of you may recall that we viewed this same moon back in April. The skies were not as heavily chemtrailed and we were able to see the object that this moon is orbiting. The contrast helps to see this large celestial object become illuminated as the light source begins to pass in front of it. This is one way we know it's not a lens flare. A lens flare can never become partially illuminated by the object creating the lens flare. Of course, this cannot be the real sun lighting up the front of this celestial orb. But as you can see, the part of this celestial orb that is facing the camera is obviously being illuminated. It would be completely illogical to even think that we could see this celestial orb behind our sun or partially behind our sun with the naked eye or with a regular camera such as these cameras. Back on March 6, some of you may recall seeing an asteroid in orbit around the Earth which actually appeared to go behind the Sun. This is ridiculous. Common sense tells us that no one could actually see with the naked eye an asteroid go behind the Sun which is 93 million miles away. NASA's circular light source tracks in synchronization with the Sun. Whenever NASA's manufactured light is in alignment with the camera lens, this equipment shows up as a black dot, which casts its own reflection upon any water source, such as this footage from the west-facing camera in Heidelberg, Alaska. The manufactured light emits a large circular glare, which completely disappears behind a thin object, such as a flagpole or a thin bird feeder post, as we've seen in many of these videos. Our real sun could never disappear behind a thin flagpole. These are just more of the biblical signs and wonders of the last days. This manufactured light is capable of producing a glare thousands of miles in diameter to engulf celestial objects in glare, which we will see more of in a minute. The south-facing camera in Sitka, Alaska shows that same red fast-rotating orb that we've seen hundreds of times before. But now, the skies are very milky, saturated with atmospheric chemicals. Untold trillions have been spent to hide this inbound planetary system from the unknowing masses. The reason is because the enemies of Christ do not want you to know how close we are to the end. The enemies of Christ do not want you to turn your life over to Jesus while you still have time. Information is at the end of this video instructing you on how to accept Christ into your life. The northwest facing camera in Pelican, Alaska shows a strange shadow near the top of the screen moving around for several hours within a confined area of the sky. Several other channels such as WSO, Jeff P, and others have shown the same type of moving shadow in the sky in various parts of the world. When I checked the same camera six days later, the shadow was gone. This is just one more sign that we are living in the very last days. Before we look at the next video, it's important for you to know that the object we are going to see is not the moon. Notice on this moonrise chart for Vancouver that the moon doesn't rise on August 13th until 8 p.m. local time. 
The southeast facing weather camera in Chicamas Canyon, British Columbia in Canada, captured a celestial object in the sky at 7.20 p.m. local time. And it's already up in the sky, so it rose maybe, I'm going to say 20 minutes ago, maybe at 7 o'clock. And the moon is not due to rise till about an hour later than that. As this object ascends upward, a horizontal streak of light is visible. The next image was removed from the camera. This is very typical for all these FAA cameras. Any images that reveal any sky anomalies are removed. I only get what they miss. The next image shows the horizontal streak much more pronounced, and only 10 minutes later, the sky is pitch dark. In just 10 minutes, the entire sky went from this to this. This is another sign that we are living in the last days. The southeast facing camera in Yukon River Bridge, Alaska captured an enormous celestial object. Some contrast applied helps to see the detail better. I'll play the video first exactly as it came off the camera. Then we'll view it with contrast so we can see the details better. We saw this same exact object seven weeks ago from this same camera. It is measurably larger than it was weeks ago. These are just more of the signs and wonders described by Jesus when he discusses the last days with his disciples and recorded throughout the Bible. In order to get an exact size comparison of this object seven weeks apart, we can use screen pixels, which are small pieces on every digital screen that are perfectly aligned in columns and rows. Seven weeks ago, this object was 149 screen pixels in diameter. Yesterday, August 18th, it was 161 pixels in diameter at approximately the same time of day on the same camera. This is an increase of 8% in seven weeks. This is significant. Simple math tells us that in one year, this celestial object will appear 60% bigger than it appears today. Here is a projection of the size of this object one year from today. As you can see, 60% makes a big difference in its appearance. The speed at which this object crosses the screen compared with the speed of other celestial objects we've viewed, tells us that it is much closer than most of the other objects. This is simple trigonometry. The same celestial object rolled across the sky from the southeast facing camera and onto the southwest facing camera, which we are viewing. From this camera's angle, the sky lenses and mirrors work very effectively at hiding this enormous object from public view. All we can see from this angle is glare produced by NASA's manufactured light bouncing off the sky lenses and mirrors. We see the same cluster of lenses and mirror glare as this object is viewed from the southwest facing camera in Red Dog, Alaska. Again, notice how milky the skies appear. This foreign system will be making its closest pass to Earth during the biblically foretold seven-year period called the Great Tribulation, a time that is described in, the, in detail in the Bible's book of Revelation. Jesus describes the tribulation caused by the approach of this system throughout the Bible's gospel books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We've seen these lenses hundreds of times in the FAA footage. This one is viewed by the same camera that just showed the cluster of glare cloaking the celestial object. These lenses are absolutely enormous, and they always have an edge rim. In July, we saw the craft busy cloaking a celestial object, while the lens to help hide it was very visible. Once again, it has the telltale edge rim. 
God's wrath upon this earth will be occurring during the Great Tribulation. But all of this is actually good news and cause for celebration, because Jesus has promised to remove his faithful followers from earth before God's wrath is unleashed upon the earth. This is commonly called the rapture, which will take place quickly and quietly. The New King James Version of Luke chapter 21 verse 36 reads, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Jesus is referring to God's wrath. He is saying that those who are counted worthy will escape all of God's wrath. The Bible repeatedly promises that faithful followers of Christ are not appointed to God's wrath. To be counted worthy, we must be living in holiness. A link in the, in the description box below discusses what holiness is and how to achieve it. The reason that your eternal soul has been sent into this fallen world is so that you can choose to love Christ out of your own free will and live according to that love. This is the only reason we are here in these temporary flesh bodies. These next few screens will tell you how to accept Christ into your life in the event you are seeking Him. Simply pause the screens if you need more time to read the text. 